and welcome back to the Cock Dice. I'm doing a bit of a video with a difference tonight. I'm going to show you how I am making um, these extra shoulder bits on my um, I've completed Paragon War Suits. That's what they're called. I nearly forgot their name for a moment then. So I love the kit. I think they're a brilliant, brilliant kit. I love the uh, it's got a Nundam sister in, in a suit concept. The only thing that I really didn't like, and I'll show you a proper picture of them so you can see that, is this kind of skinny upper arm they've got. And I've been kicking around a load of ideas for it. Uh, originally I was looking at armor plating it, and then I was building my Morgan Val. I realized she has these kind of the cool pieces on her. Um, I thought about making a mold of these, but then they'd be very, very fixed in that kind of position. So I've made my own. And obviously they're really square at the moment. I'm gonna show you how to make them a bit, look a bit cooler, thicken them up a little bit and square them off. So. First of all, we need to make this uh, a pattern basically for this. I found that piece of one centimetre thick, fairly hefty paper. It's, this is just a notepad I have nearby. And wrapping around, it wants to be about two centimetres long. So all I did originally was wrap a piece around the shoulder here, from, from the, the point there to the back, measured about two centimetres. I put a pen on the inside before I stuck the arms on and drew around the inside of the arch and that gave me a nice arched piece like this obviously with the cutouts and then I sat and very carefully measured out five um, cutout pieces at the bottom with a, a little gap between them all just to kind of replicate this pattern here. So I made a, that's my master, um, I then cut six more of these out And these got stuck on to Sister Sam's. And I was looking at them the other night, going, kind of cool idea. How do we make it better? So the first thing we're going to do, paintbrush, dab of water, just soak the cloth, soak the cloth, soak the paper all the way around. Like so. Try not to get it up. They're just super glued on at the top, so try not to get it at the top. And as the paper starts getting nice and wet, you'll find that you can start moving it around a bit. So you can kind of get rid of that squareness. You can push it in here and there. Give it a bit of fold. Bring these out a bit. Start giving it a little bit of movement in it. It was looking a little too square previously. So do it lightly with your paintbrush, it doesn't need to much. Like so. Then, once that's dried, and here's one I made earlier, uh, that was my yesterday one. Uh, no, it wasn't, that was my this morning one. That was yesterday's one, this one should be, yeah, this one's nice and dry. As you can see from this one, we've got a much better curve around some of the shoulders. I've twisted some of these round. We need to make it a bit firmer. So obviously it was paper before. This, lovely and firm. So this is the one I made earlier. This is my test piece again. And we need to get a tub of super glue. Really, really nice, thin, runny super glue. And this is my ancient old super glue now. And we're just gonna dab some of this on. So this is just paper here. Nice dab of that on. Get a really nice old knackered paintbrush, which I've got one over here. I'm just going to spread this over. And what this will do, this will soak into the paper. Super glue is great for this and make the paper really nice and firm. So, yeah, back to here's one I made earlier. Now, as you can see from this one, this is really nice and firm now. It's not quite as folded out of this one. Left this one a little straighter, I think. I've perfected the technique a bit more and made some more folds in my later ones. Next up, you'll need some green stuff. Probably not a lot of this. Just let's take a bit off the end here. And mix it up. So once you've got a nice smooth ball of green stuff, we're going to take some bits of this off. Just a tiny little amount at first. 
flatten it out so nice and thin. I'm just going to add it to the paper. Bring it off my finger. Didn't wet to finger first. That was silly. Then use the dish end of your sculpting tool and we're just going to very carefully start spreading this over the surface of the shoulder. Now you might be asking why I did this and not just make green stuff ones and hang them. I tried that first and I found it was really really hard to get this shape. So even when I cut out around the template, uh, the minute I started cutting these uh, hanging down cutout bits really started losing their shape um, and after a bit of playing around with it I decided it just wasn't worth the effort. So instead I decided it was going to be far better to put some sort of structure on it first so I can green stuff over it and then just build the green stuff up, stuff up in little thin layers. So where you've got nothing behind one to hold, I'm just going to stick the knife in there. I'm not, not really pushing into the model at all, just holding it behind so I've got something to press down on. And I can spread this green stuff in without ripping the paper. But that's kind of the purpose of the super glue, it makes the, makes the paper much much stronger and able to take a bit of pushing around at this stage. I found if you just use paper on its own, the minute you start trying to do this it just disintegrates. So that's the first coat of green stuff all over this and then we're going to move to a rubber clay shaping tool. This is really really good for getting exceedingly smooth fabric. So it should tie in with the rest of her clothes. We're just going to tidy it all up, catch all the loose bits of green stuff, square up the edges as we go. Just give it a little rub over, try and get any finger marks or anything else like that out of the sculpting we've done. Once you've got it as smooth as you can get it, I'm going to start popping a few folds in here, so just where these um, meet, I'm going to drop some folds in. It doesn't want to be perfectly smooth, but the deeper we can get some of these lines, the more when we paint it, the paints will just sink into them. So as you can see, we've got some various folds and uh, creases in this fabric now, and just a little bit more texture in it. I've, um, th this one's a fairly straight up and down one, but some of the others are a bit more twisted, so we'll uh, just kind of work into them. You've just got to kind of find the natural folds. The paper will have done some of the job for you. You can certainly see on this one, you've got a lovely fold here. It's going to come in and, and some folds down here. But you just need to work into it where it feels natural. Try and get some folds so that when you shade and wash the model, you've got somewhere for the paint to run. And it makes it a lot easier for highlighting later on. And there we have it. That is pretty smooth. All the way around. I've got some nice folds and creases in them all the way. And they're looking a bit fatter and a bit more natural than before. So you compare hers to one of ours. I think mine are actually a little bit longer. But it works nonetheless. You could opt to try and add some tiny skulls on them or some beads, but I think I'm just going to leave mine there. I mainly wanted to help balance out some of the colours on my paragons um, with the blue and white armour that I've picked for the rest of the force. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps 
boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care, and we'll see you next time.